and thank you for tuning in once again to the 30-Day Mental Diet. We are today at day 17 of the 30-Day Mental Diet. I would like to thank everybody for tuning in. And if you have come this far, that means you are really disciplined because it takes a lot of discipline for everyone to follow along with these lessons every day. Well, why a 30-Day Mental Diet? If there's ever been a time that we need a 30-day mental diet, now is the time. Right now, we are going through a pandemic, and there's a lot of focus in, that on the, in the media. But we as students of, this, of these lessons of the 30-day mental diet, we have to remember that our thoughts are causative effects in the world. Our thoughts are creative and our thoughts are creating the circumstances of our lives. So it's very, very important that when you get up in the morning, are you focused in on the media and the media's narrative? Is that media's narrative running over and over and over in your head, making you feel afraid and insecure? Or are you resting in the assurance that you know that there is a power that is stronger and that if you focus your mind upon this power that you will create the positive circumstances that you want in your life. Let us start today's lesson and I will read the introduction as usual, how to build security. Proper investments pay big dividends. As incongruous as it may seem, security rests not in the tangible things of the world, but in the security that you are able to establish within your own mind. This does not mean that you disregard or discard such tangible evidence of security as you may, as you may possess, but rather that that which enables you to create and establish outer security is determined by your inner sense of security. Very, very strong statement. Very, very important statement. That which enables you to establish outer security, tangible things in the world, is determined by your inner sense of security. Next paragraph says, who is secure? And I'll start in the, in the middle of that paragraph. Some people we call lucky, but a closer scrutiny would reveal that their sense of security rests not in possessions, but in the confidence in their own ability. That regardless of what happens, they know that in some way, shape, or form, everything would always be all right for them. They possess a sense of security that had its foundation within itself. So here's a very, very strong statement and a, and a, and a thought for you. Your security rests within. Your security is with God. You create with God every single day the circumstances and the things in, your, in our outer world. We must constantly seek within, within the kingdom of God, those things we need. So our security rests not in what's in the outer world, but what resides within the kingdom, which is within our hearts. Let me move forward. Security. What is security? I'm going to what is security. In truth, security rests within you. It is inner security. What must it encompass? You would first have to possess a feeling of security towards that which created you. So you must have feel security with God. And if you are not secure 
with your position with God, that is the first thing that you must establish. So, Kinner is saying here, you must first be securing, secure with that which created you. And you should realize that you were not created by chance and tossed into an inhospitable world to do the best you could. But the source of your being is continually active through you. You are not alone, but an individualization of the creative power. Very, very, very important. God did not create you and just throw you into the world and left, left you alone. God is with you every step of the way. He said in his word in the Bible that he will never leave you nor forsake you. So if you know in times of trouble and calamity that God is always there, always guiding you, and always there to protect you, then you have your security resting within yourself. Let's move. Continual security. Once you come to know that security rests not in tangible things, but in that which is responsible for their appearance. Let's stop there. Anything that you see in the world that is a tangible thing can be taken away in an instant, can be destroyed in an instant. But do you realize that within you, this, the true security is not in the tangible things, but that which is responsible for their appearance? Remember we spoke in a couple, a few lessons back and we said first cause is always mental. So if we know first cause is always mental, all the tangible things that's in this world was first a thought. The things that are seen are created by things that are not seen, which is thoughts. Mm -hmm. Important thing. So that's where your, your, your security rests in the fact that you can control your thoughts. And that those thoughts that you are controlling is creating your world. Let me finish that same uh, paragraph again. It says, once you come to know that security rests not in tangible things, but in that which is responsible for their appearance in your experience, then you will possess a sense of security that you never, that can never be disturbed by anything. Think about that. That's true security. Let's move forward. Creating security. So we're at the, the, the paragraph that says creating is security. And we're going to spend some time here. Okay. The one sure way of create, creating the experience of security that you desire is to know that God is the provider of all things. And that out of his limitless creative actions comes an abundance of all good. Let's stop there and let's think about what we just read. Once we realize that God is the creator and provider of all things, we don't worry about out if we lose things on the outside. We don't worry about if the market crashes. We don't worry about the changes in this world because in this world we shall have tribulation. But we know that God is the creator of our future and we are looking within every single day for, for our daily bread. And in the prayer of the Lord's prayer, the, the, the Christ said, give us this day our daily bread. We're not worried about the future. We want our daily bread this day. And we know our daily bread every morning is coming from God. Let's move forward. Those, those things you have need of can be provided 
are being provided and always will be provided. Think about that. The things that you need can be provided, are being provided, and will always be provided. That is security. Knowing that you will never go begging bread. That the Lord is my shepherd, I shall never want. That's important and that's confidence in God. Let's move forward. If you do not accept your security in this manner, you are denying what you think God to be and his beneficial action in your life. Regardless of what you might once have thought, financial security rests and flows from God. For all comes from this one source. Let's think about that. Your financial security, your final security, your any type of security that you think of, rests with God. He is the beginning and the end of your security. Accept what you need. So we're at the paragraph that says, accept what you need. It is your thinking that makes available to you what you term your security. If in spite of appearances, very important, let's, let's read that again. In spite of appearances, you are able to maintain a consistent pattern of thought that you will always possess a tangible security and accept it as being your experience now. Not in the future, now. Then there is no alternative, but out of the action of life, this is what is established for you. Any other form of security has, has no more stability than a castle of sand on the ocean sword. Sure, any tide of events may carry it away. Mm. Let's move down to the last paragraph. The last paragraph is sound investments. So a lot of times we call investments securities. Bonds, stocks, derivatives, any type of derivatives, they're called securities. But let's find out what is the true sound investment. The soundest investment you can make, which pays the surest and greatest dividends, are the thoughts you are able to implant firmly in your own mind. I'm going to repeat that because this is very, very important. The soundest investment you can make, which pays the surest and greatest dividends, are the thoughts that you're able to implant firmly in your mind. This is why it's so important every day, especially during this 30-day mental diet, that you use the daily diet, that you create affirmations for yourself. You create those affirmations in the positive and say, I am this and I am that. Create those things and those thoughts will be planted firmly in your mind. Let me move forward. Security starts in your mind and heart. The ideas and emotions you possess are deposits you make in the bank of life from which you may draw as liberally as you wish according to the deposits that you have made. Important thing. In the computer business, uh, software engineers say garbage in, garbage out. If we are not planting in the bank security within our bank of our thoughts, within our heart and within our mind, we will have nothing to draw on, draw from when we go, when we need. So we must every day plant words and thoughts of security within our mind, firmly planted in our mind, 
in spite of outside circumstances, in spite of appearances, so that when we need to draw from our bank account, we can go and draw liberally. Let me go forward. Whether you have or have not depends on you. Hmm. In the mental stimulus, it says that the outside world of objects may thus be regarded as, as originated in a sustained mental field created by the divine mind with which our minds are in kind of rapport. So let's go to our diet today and let us read the diet. And, and, and I hope this chapter reinforce how important the diet is and how important it is for you to make affirmations daily for your life. Because when you repeat those affirmations that you have created for yourself, you are depositing in, into your bank account, into the bank account of your mind where you can draw from liberally. So let's read the diet together, folks. Okay? The diet. Today and every day, I know that I am always secure. That which created me has not forsaken me, but is ever present and active in all aspects of my life and experience. It is through this infinite creative action that my every good need is continually fulfilled. I place my confidence and base my sense of security in this action instead of in the results of the action. I, no longer, I am no longer satisfied only with results, for I now have discovered that which is the cause of them. God is my partner throughout my experience of living, and I now accept his abundance in all respects. My tangible security is but a reflection of the mental and emotional security I maintain. There is no questioning in my mind, no fear and no anxiety, for I declare and accept that security in every sense is always mine. I have an unwavering and unshakable conviction that God can, does, and will always provide an abundance of all good things. Security now is mine to experience, not something to be sought for. The inner security I now know is the only real security and the channel for the evidence of it in my life. With confidence, I face the never-ending future in the wisdom that God always provides my every right need right now. What a wonderful diet. What a wonderful affirmation. And I would like to say to you once again that I would like to hear your comments about today's lesson. You can comment below. And if this is your first time to the channel, please like and subscribe and also share this video. And I want to thank you for continually pushing forward in the 30-day mental diet. I will see you again tomorrow.